just bought this for 400 it's been sitting here for a long time with no history whether it runs or not or needs work gonna make it did you and hey guys how's it going so this piece of power equipment I grabbed at the yard sale along with uh, three others I have a couple of weeks ago I did a package deal for the most part on all of them this is the first one that I, I made a deal on it's a like a residential Toro zero turn decent machine it's not a commercial one but you know it's better than your uh, craftsman 1000 <laughs> Anyway, so the backstory on it is I bought it from an estate sale. The woman was moving. Her husband had passed, I think, in 2009, she says. So that would be 11 years ago from now. And a little questionable about some of the dates on things. Last it was serviced was 6 7. I don't know if that's 6 of 07. It's the month 6 7. Who knows? I crossed some of the personal information out on that tag. And other than that, I haven't looked at anything. I just pretty much rolled it up there. Rolled it on the trailer, rolled it off the trailer, and then rolled it up on here. We're going to go figure it out together. What has happened to it over that period of time? Again, it was scored with all the gas in it and you know all the normal stuff that uh, during use it would have been set up. Nothing's been taken into consideration to put it away for long term. So let's go see what it takes to bring it back. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> the... Uh, DR field and brush mower, which I already did, that did have some issues. Uh, so, you know, there's the possibility that this may have the same thing. Let's go get set up. We'll get into this thing. Maybe we'll throw a battery charger on the battery. I don't know if it's going to come back or not. This does not roll. It has, uh, as far as what the, co the comments were on the first one, that there is e electric solenoids on the levers for park. So when you draw them in, it needs power from the battery to pull in some sound noise for it to roll. The transmissions do have levers on them. There should be a tag down here. I don't know if you guys can see that tag right there. And it's, it states if you want to push it, you got to push the lever in. If it's for an operation, the lever has to be out. Both levers are in and it still does not roll. People were scolding me on that. Well, you're wrong. I had it right. Generally, it is the other direction though. All right, so let's go uh, get a battery charger on that. Let's get ourselves a little assessment on this. We'll pop some covers off and see what it takes to bring it back to life. I guess the first thing we'll deal with is the, hopefully the crud that's on there. Weird that it's got plastic wing nuts, huh? First I've seen on that. Should add some baking soda here. I'm gonna take a, a wire brush that will get that crap off of there and get a battery charger on it. See the other one looks like. Oh, just as good. <laughs> that one's got a bolt in it though. And yeah, we we'll go clean them up. I've been on a battery charger for a few minutes. Yeah, you put a test light across them, it just gives me an idea of what's happening, and you can kind of disconnect the one of them. You can see it's already taken a charge. That's a good sign, actually. I didn't expect that to come back. Let's see what we got for. I see fuel in there. Something's. Doesn't look terribly yellow. I'm not saying that usually the gas tank does not get too bad. It's where it sits in the carburetor where it really gets nasty. Let's go check the Earl. Pop the air cleaner off. See how that stuff looks. I apologize ahead of time for some of the background noise. There's a an AC unit going. The ceiling fan above us. It is 97 degrees in here. Right, what do you think the trick is to this? It's 
definitely been used. This is one of those fun carburetors tucked in there a little bit. Where's the oil? Uh, you see the oil fill? There it is in the back there. It looks pretty good. The uh, the brush marble was a mess. Had gas in it and everything. Actually, let's go give her another. Hmm. She doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'd like to get the float ball off of this thing. Let's go take a peek down below. Yeah, we need to get to that float ball right there, and it's got a solenoid for fuel shut off. I really would like to drain it and see what it looks like before we run some crap through it. I think we can get this out of our way. It's like it's just a support for the bagging system. I see two rods and a pin down here, right there. If you look down a little bit, you can see it. There you go. Let's get this out of the way. We'll see if we can get that ball off. It's just got some pins on it. Three pins, it comes right off. And a washer that's on the floor. There we go. What about that? And we might work around that. Yeah, I lied. Let's see if we can get that out of our way. Got to clean back there anyway. You know where you need a half inch more? Yeah, you do. You know when the battery's overcharging and you're overdoing it and it starts pushing some of the water out of the battery. It's not a good sign. I heard some sizzling and whining. First I thought it was one of you guys. Not nah, the battery. Turned her way down. Let it charge a little on the slower side. Might be a good idea. So these carbs, the float ball is on them. The fuel shutoff, which is that solenoid, is also the jet bulb nut. Right, which one's the fuel line? Go clamp off the fuel line. I don't suspect it's going to keep flowing because it's got a fuel pump. But just in case. Right, so we need to unplug that. And then a specialty wrench, which is a, a half inch ground down. So you can get in there. Think we can get anything out of it? Looks pretty clean. And what that's for, that jet, is so when you shut it off, fuel doesn't keep getting sucked up in it. Nah, just a little bit. I'm gonna take a mirror and take a peek up there. All the fuel evaporated out and it just left whatever the little crud that was. Again, I don't think this machine was used six months before he passed, unfortunately. Ah, uh, so the, the jet. So the fuel gets sucked up the middle into the jet, into the carb. And there's a little electric solenoid right here. So when you put power to it, it, it draws that pin down, allows fuel to get in. As soon as you turn the key off, that pops up. So that residual spinning of the engine, when it's like slowing down, there's no spark there anymore, but it's still kind of sucking fuel through and it sucks the fuel through and it actually puts the raw fuel into the hot exhaust. And sometimes when you shut it off, especially if you shut it off at higher RPMs, it'll give that bang when you shut it off. That's the idea to try to get rid of that. Stop the fuel from flowing as soon as you turn the key off. Yeah, we didn't need the cup, huh? Uh, we're gonna leave that off because we're gonna want to crank some through anyway and see what kind of color the fuel comes out. I'm also looking while we're here I can see some a little bit of debris right there so we might have a mouse nest inside the covers and I also see some right here so we might end up having to go pull it apart anyway just to go address some of that stuff I don't even know if this engine turns yet not that I don't suspect that it shouldn't but maybe uh, we'll grab a jumper pack and we'll bump the key real quick and just make sure that everything uh, electrically does what it's supposed to do you can have some of that spilt battery juice. Let's see if we can 
use the jumper pack for now. Well, oh, that's still doing its thing. We're gonna go hook up ground somewhere else. Good. Let's see what happens. What was that? Oh, that was the solenoids pulling in. I turn the key on because I didn't get. Yeah, those are the solenoids pulling in. Will they go out if I? Yeah, it should be part neutral. I guess it only needs one of them. Now right, you want to go crank her a little bit? A little bump? Nothing. I am in park, right? No. Slacker, you had it. <laughs> not gonna crank without that. The seat safety's not hooked up too, so that may or may not be an issue. There we go. Not too bad. That's good. Let's, uh, what are we gonna do? Let's go try to push some fuel to it. We'll crank it, see if we get some fuel coming out of that carb. Now let's see if uh, Terrell and the gang can grab us a coffee cocktail. Anything? Nothing. It's got like three quarters of a tank. I don't see a shut off. Maybe we'll look a little bit more. I did not see a fuel shut off though. I looked real, real quick. Yeah. There must be a shut off somewhere. Problem is, it's probably right in the open and we're not even seeing it. Driver's seat anywhere. So this is a fuel gauge and it's like. It's like right to the top right there. We find where the fuel line goes in. Here's the fuel line. Because up through here. You see it? See a sticker saying fuel here? <laughs> I don't see anything. Oh, back by the fuel pump itself. Out to the car. One's going to be vacuum. So this is the fuel coming in right here. It is a vacuum pulse. The pump works off of a pulse. In the crankcase, I see a filter down there. Could be uh, the fuel pump itself. What's that little sticker? What do they say? All right, well, I'm gonna go peek around a little bit and now we'll crank it some more, see if we get some fuel coming out of it. If not, we'll pull the thing off of there, see if we can get some fuel. I would just spin it a little bit more. I thought, uh, I was pretty sure the cup was not holding the float up. Yeah, we're not getting anything. I'm right, gonna go pull the fuel line off the uh, pump. I do not see a, a shut off anywhere. If and when it does fire up, don't we get rid of some. Uh, Pumps have like little valves in them. I'm not too far from like a, like a heart does, you know, it's got little check valves. Pulse goes one direction and closes off a valve and the pulse comes back the other. And if they, you know, especially today's fuel, they can um, get sticky. 
It's, uh, the ethanol and the fuel kind of makes them stick. It's flowing a little. Sometimes you could even just like put some fuel in it backwards and you wet them and the, the wetness of it kind of helps make the seal. I mean, you're thinking jokes right now. Actually, you know what? I want to blow air through that, make sure it can kind of blow into the tank. Let's go give her a little, little mouth to mouth. Let's open that cap up. Make sure we got a clear path. Yeah, it's bubbling into the tank. It should be just... The other thing too, you could take a rag, wrap it around the air gun. I'm gonna go try pushing a little bit of air. Let's go do that. Let's go prime it at least so we get fuel to the pump and get it wet. We're gonna pressurize the tank again, see if we get it go right through to the carb. Oh, you know what? It's never gonna do anything. Leave the vice grips on it. Make sure that float is down, that floats down. Why don't you tell me? Yeah, gas all over this rag now too. Nothing much. Nothing a little spark. Can't set the straight with. I think I hear it tinkling. I emptied the cup, so if anything's in it, if anything's in it, we got it. Huh. Got a little bit. Good. I'm gonna dry some of this uh, <laughs> misting of fuel <laughs> up a little bit. Let that dry up a little bit. I'm gonna go crank it. Just make sure we got fuel pumping out of there. All right, cup's empty again. I believe the float is hanging down. It's hard to see in there. Let's go crank her, see if it cranks some gas out. Clear? Clear. What do you think? It's working? Come on, please. Ha! <laughs> good. Looks pretty good, too. It does have a, a vintage smell. I wouldn't say any tea, but it's, it's vintage. I think we can go put that bowl back on. We take a uh, mirror, take a quick peek at the jet. The, that bowl is pretty clean though. Just make sure there's nothing funky up there. So we'll pull it down and clean it. If not, I'm gonna just pop that float bowl back on, put the uh, fuel shut off on it. Maybe we can fire it up, listen to it for a minute. Let's see how well this works for us. So I am looking, that's probably too much light for you, huh? I am looking straight up. into that that's where the main jet is I know that's so much lighting. I'll get it hold on this camera is very sensitive to light what I see normally like when I'm looking right at it with the light on it's fine but then the camera looks at it and it's just all bleached out so I'm looking right up into the center of that <laughs> you get it anyway so the center of that actually looks pretty good i am going to take an air gun just blow the main passage through but i do not see anything there that warrants pulling that carburetor off i've been burned before from doing that but that is the direction we're going to go take so yeah i'm going to shoot air through that we'll put that back together and uh, let it fill up and give her a fire i'll let the camera roll while i'm putting this on tell a little camera story so i talked about i bought in cameras new camera I bought a Osmo action cam it's kind of like the competitor to the GoPro and I got it and all set I quickly and with support package extra batteries 400 bucks so that we can do some more you know the ride shots we can switch over to it and when I did that it was all set 
I put it on the trike. We went for a ride on the trike. I put it on the handlebars and mounted it. It had like a little menu that, you know, you're supposed to do all the crap as far as like dates and stuff. But I just quickly wanted to see what kind of film quality it gave me and what the stability was. It had like numbers on it, five, four, and it's like doing this countdown. When I looked into it, you have to go online for a, with your, with a smartphone. You can't even do it with a laptop. You have to do it with a smartphone. You have to tie it to that. And you get five shots of doing it. And after that, it shuts itself down. I have an iPhone 5S. It has one shot left and then it shuts itself down. What do you do after that? I don't know. I try ca calling support. Nobody answers the phone. <laughs> so either I need a new phone that can be compatible with trying to cross over with it. it. It just ended up being a total pain in the ass. So yeah, I do have another camera. Um, but as of right now, I hate it. <laughs> so I don't know, you know. I gotta get a new phone anyway, and I got one shot left at it, and it gets screwed up. Uh, what the deal is to go around that? But that's what's happening with the camera part of things. I should have just went for a GoPro. <laughs> All right, we can. Uh, I think we can fire it up. Actually, I foresee me firing it up. The wheel's wanting to turn. And it's on those dollies. It launches itself, falls off the table. So maybe I'll be a little proactive. I'll throw this jack underneath there. Actually, I wonder if I can get it across to touch both transmissions. And we'll get these dollies out of here. All right, it's gonna take a second for the gas to fill. Let's give her some choke. And throttles, make sure the throttle even works, huh? Looks to be. We can give it about a quarter throttle. Probably take a second for that float ball to fill up and get some fuel in it. Here, oh, we gotta pop those valves yet. on the tire, huh? Definitely sat in one place for a long time. Probably just, you know, probably three pounds of pressure in each one. There's that solenoid pulling in. Nice. I saw some crap kicking out. I think we're probably better off pulling those covers off. I do see crap in there and the problem with an air cooled you definitely want to make sure that there's nothing blocking that because that will take you out of the game it's just like running a it's like running your car with uh, no water in the radiator same idea it's just going to overheat there's no airflow going around the, the fins of the head so let's go get this cover out of our way and uh, just for the sake of uh, feeling that everything is on the up and up it'll feel much better knowing we got all that clear all the bolts loose and the exhaust fan's on in the background. Sorry about the noise. Let's see. Looks like. Not bad. A little bit. I wouldn't call it mouse nest though. I think it's just debris from cutting grass, you know. That cover is fairly easy to come off. There's 
you don't even have to take anything apart other than four, I think five screws, six screws. All right, so I'm gonna go blow some of those fins out just right there. Usually a lot of times it'll get packed. You'll see the mice will eat the wires right here. Nice, it's clean. No overheating anywhere. See that battery's doing. Not much difference. Good. That battery actually may recover. This machine. No, oh, I shouldn't say it. <laughs> I guess this machine's not putting out much of a fight. We haven't fired the mower deck up yet, though. I seem to remember uh, some of the machines having a problem with an intake leak. Whether this is the style or not, I believe it was the split manifold one that over time. They can crack and separate where the two halves are put together. I'm not sure if that shows up. Kind of looking at the gap there, you can see it gets wider there and, and thinner there. Again with the jokes, would you? Come on, grow up. All right, so I'm gonna go put all these covers back on, blow the air cleaner out. We gotta probably put all that back on. I, I don't think this thing has many hours at all. It doesn't have an hour meter on it, but I, I, I would be, I'd be surprised if the tractor has 50 hours on it. Probably look at the tits on the tires to see if it's uh, and yeah, you still got them on the ends. Got tits on the ends? Yeah, I don't think this thing has much time on it at all. Put those covers back on, batteries hooked up, grease the terminals. Let's go fire it up, then we'll turn the mower deck on. We'll just go for it, see what happens. You chop my leg off. See that battery's had to get to fire it too. So they need to be out, correct? Yeah, they're not gonna start unless it's in that position. Say it. <laughs> this one's being too easy. It's not putting up a, the normal fight that I'm used to. I think we can air up the tires. We'll take a quick look at the deck underneath, look at the blades, see if they need any love. And it needs a really good pressure wash. It had some of the battery acid leak down onto the mower deck, so I want to wash that off. I wiped it up already, but I want to wash it off too to neutralize that so it doesn't take the paint off. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of August. It's so hot in here and humid that uh, you bend over, and your pants squeak because <laughs> there's so so much moisture in certain areas. All right, what do you think for PSI? I'm gonna say one. Oh, that surprised me. Ten. Anybody say ten? But you that lumpy side and the other. I'm going to bring it up to 15. This has the bagger on the end of it. Yeah, I'm a, I like it about for working and you, and you like when you're hopping, like 55 degrees. Actually, I think this is the tire that we put air in over there with a the little compressor. And it's got a tear in it. I don't think we're going to rotate it. No. Can you see down here? Look down here. Yeah, it's got a tear in the tire. Whether that's why it's leaking or not, I don't know. We might be able to. Yeah. That one's got zero. It might be leaking at that spot though. We'll spray it down with some soapy water. What do you think? 12? 16. Or make it 15. 15. Go get a soapy bottle of water and give her a little gushing. If it takes two years to go flat, I'm good with that too. So 
sometimes it's the stem also. We're right in the center of the stem. I'm gonna get it right down to the side where you can't see again. This is too tall. Gonna spray around the back side, get it wet in the back side. We'll let that sit up. We'll see if any, any spot decides to foam up a little bit. Could even be in the tread too, you know. I ran over a nail. We gotta get that to roll. So that pin has to go back in. We have to turn the key on, right? Park is in, the neutral's in. Come on, I got the other side. Should roll for us. <laughs> Says you. Gonna let that, I leave the uh, damage on top. Let's go fill the other two front. We'll let this set up a little bit, see if we can find the leak. Yeah, it looks like right where that, that tear is. It's got a slight leak. Any place where it's bubbling, everything else, I think we are okay. Uh, a couple of things we could do. We could slime it. It's, it's very minute. I'm also possibly even thinking, I wonder if we can put a, a plug in it. Now you wouldn't do that on a sidewall of a car, but a mower at six miles an hour. It's not like you can go crash and go off the road. I also wonder if I could just blow, do a patch on the inside with your tube. We could do a slime, a couple of things we can do. And yeah, the way it's torn though, I don't think we can get a plug in there anyway. It's one between a tube, slime, and a patch. What one do you want to do? So people are going to have it like, I wonder if like rubber cement, if we just take it and literally rubber cement the fold and <laughs> back down, dry it out real good. You want to try it? It's not going to hurt. I got nothing tonight to, uh, I don't have a tube to fix it with tonight. So maybe we'll just go try that. Yeah, it's right down that, that bottom down corner. Then I'll blow it out real good with air. We'll dry it out real good. We'll just see if it helps. And then we'll just cut this excess off right here either with a razor blade just so it doesn't catch it when I go pull away again. Be a good experiment. How's that? Yeah, you can see the cords down inside there. I'm not giving it much hope. Well, let's just try it. I'm going to let it set up overnight anyway. I'm going to call tonight. I'm going to jack it up for tonight. Actually, we should probably cut that little tip off right now. Because if you go and catch it, it's just going to rip out. Anyway. Let's see if we can get down to... Area we can clamp it. What's your guess? <laughs> Let's let that sit overnight and just for shits and giggles, we'll see if that does anything for us. That's about 24 hours later. What's your thoughts? I think tire patches and glue, I think when you peel that, that backing off, it's almost like a two part epoxy that helps cure it. So the cement may not have done what it's supposed to or could have <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's go put that the I put it back in here. I was gonna put it at the top dead center. Let's let that soak a little bit. We'll see if it does any bubbling. And then even if it does seal, what does it do after it rides for a while and you know the tire flexes? Will it pop loose again or not? That's why I wanted to cut that little tab off just so it couldn't kind of catch on anything. And see a little bubbling. I will let it sit. What's that? <laughs> Fail. Oh well, we tried. All right, I'm gonna go run that jack up fairly high and we'll lift that mower deck up and we'll take a peek underneath there and see how things are doing. Light on the subject. Let's see what we have. It looks pretty clean. Uh, I think it's pretty spotless under there. I do see an issue. Do you see the issue? You pause it right here and let me know when you see the boo boo. You find it? You find it yet? How about now? <laughs> that blade is not upside down. The sharp edge is not supposed to be on the top. The other one, the other one's right. Not that one. Well, that'll make for interesting tearing of grass. Probably why you bought another mower. <laughs> this one cuts like crap. Doesn't buy a new one. All right, let's see, spin that blade off. We'll flip that one around. And I'll spin them. I'm just gonna eyeball them. I'm gonna look at like a point right here. I'll spin it around. See if that same point. Try that again. So I'm gonna look like right here. And I'll spin the blade around. See if it maintains that distance. I'll do the same on the other side. Make sure there's just no bend to them. This blade's like new. It's like new because you're only using the wrong end. <laughs> and the, the sad part about this is. This was serviced by a dealer, and that's the quality of work you get. It might work better that way. <laughs> Throw that back on. Huh? Well, guys, I really don't see much to do on this other than giving it in the bath and putting the bagger back on it. I'm not even gonna bother changing the oil just because I, I literally think it doesn't have any hours on it. Looking at the paint underneath the mower deck and where your feet go, there's nothing rubbed off anywhere. I don't think this thing's got much of any kind of hours on it at all. So is going to a friend of mine, BW Nut has decided that um, it would be very good for cutting the grass at his house because he has a couple of acres to mow and he's currently doing it with a push mower. <laughs> so uh, it's going his direction and uh, it's going to go with a, a slightly leaking tire. I'm going to grab some, uh, probably throw some tire seal in there see how it does over time and he's got a good deal on it so he's getting it with a he's getting it with a funky tire <laughs> i'm gonna go drop it down pressure wash it throw the bagger on it put it on the trailer go cut some grass so i had this thing wide open screaming down the road heard some grinding and crunching noises and then a loud skid you ever see a chain that now does a complete 180 yeah, that was a fun ride. I stayed up though. <laughs> I haven't done much with zero turns, but more, I, I serviced a couple friends commercial ones. This one's a totally different setup from what I'm used to. Normally you have in the center, you have either one or two 
hydraulic pumps that run a couple of motors. You have hoses, valves, and it runs to two separate motors. And this is just running a belt. I don't know if you can see it up in there. Belt just runs to each one, and each one is its own independent unit. It looks like the parking brake is just a lever that goes back and grabs, grabs a cog, too. I don't know if that's the electric one or just the pedal. When you go and you hit the brake pedal. Neat little setup, though. I guess, you know, for more of an economy machine. That might be, that's your forward and reverse, I believe. Neat little setup. Looks like they're fairly sealed units. Looking for any fill plugs on them. Well, I think it'd be somewhere, huh? Filling the drain. Well, again, the thing's got so low hours on it. I think we're just kind of wasting time chasing that for now. Not like it's the typical stuff I bring home. I don't know if you ever tried riding a zero turn. They don't ex steer exactly uh, the norm, <laughs> let's say. I'm gonna go fire it up and uh, see if we can not drop that wheel off the edge. Well, that made short work of it. It's fun to ride around on, too. Once you get used to the uh, setup of the zero turn, how to steer it, yeah, you kind of want to practice in the open before you get too close to stuff, because I did bang into a fence or two or a table <laughs> here and there. But they are fun to use, and they uh, get around stuff really quick. You know, especially if you got little tight areas, you want to go spin around a tree or something, you can buzz right around them. Good thing I washed it, huh? <laughs> yeah, that really uh, went over. Uh, that's time well spent. I'll blow it off again with the air gun. It's going to go over to Brian's house anyway. Let's go see how the bagger system worked. And they just pop right off of there. That looks like it does just dandy. Awesome. See how, again, in the fall with the leaves, see how well it does with that too. All right, guys. Well, I guess this is uh, going to be a little on the shorter side because this one was uh, so new, it really didn't need much loving other than a backwards blade, uh, the battery. What else did we find? Anything? The carb was pretty clean. Fuel system was decent. And the chomp on the tire. This one was even a challenge. I'm sure uh, I'll have others that'll make up for it. But this worked out pretty good.
All right, guys. With that, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank all you for kind of hanging out with me. Uh, doing a little bit of wrenching on a uh, cheap Toro homeowner zero turn. And we'll get on to something. Probably the John Deere, I would think, would be next. We'll get that one taken care of. And uh, that's the one that's going to stay here because it's got the power bagger on it. Quick look at the garden. For those who are into gardening. We did some uh, curved arches of uh, cattle fencing. We just bent them in hoops and then grew mines up off of them. She's got pumpkins growing off of those. And it's getting late in the season, so a lot of stuff is starting to uh, die off, but all the tomatoes are coming in. I can't take any credit for any of this other than rototilling it and setting up the hoops. My wife did the rest of it. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you for uh, hanging out with me, doing a little bit of light wrenching. Until the next one, see ya. Yeah.